We good? Is that the go live so, music? Yeah. Yeah. Our theme song. All right. Um, we will start off with public input. Travis. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Hold on. <laughs> I have it if you want me to send it to you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we don't have any public input tonight if you don't want to go crazy. Or, I mean, do you want me to just read it or? Probably. Why don't you just read it? Okay. Um, the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by me. Um, the speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, matters, it, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. So we don't, we do not have any. Let me check it one more time. Refresh. Nope, nothing. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the minutes of March 18th. So last week was not a regular meeting. It was, but you'll get the minutes for that the next time around. Yeah. Right. Does anybody have any uh, comments? Edits? I'll make a motion to accept them. Okay, just a second. Can we get a second? second. Okay. All in favor? I'm sorry, who seconded? Rebecca. Rebecca. All right, student report. Hi, uh, I apologize. I've been busy with work, so I haven't been able to attend recently. And if you can hear noises in the background, that's my bird. <laughs> uh, but um, so recently, obviously, there was the update with the second semester to add uh, an extra day for the freshmen and some online class time for uh, the juniors and seniors, I believe. Uh, and I think a lot of students appreciate the time at, in the building it's been like really nice for a lot of the in-person kids to have that time to see friends but also get to interact uh i know in spanish the other day we took a quiz on paper and everyone was like oh paper with a pencil like there's just so much little things like that um which make the in-person days a lot nicer feel more regular um, the Thursday online classes, I think not a lot of students have, a lot of students have said, like, they don't see much of the use, especially in the time it takes for teachers to take attendance. I personally think that it's, it'll be good for just a quick check-in, but, um, other than that, I don't know how much will be, uh, complicated. And then some, like, morale students have been stressed with the workload especially people who are working jobs and stuff and it's difficult because teachers are trying to fit all this normal school year work into a semester or quarter 
So it's been like really tough on everybody, but I'm thinking that with April vacation coming up and summer just around the corner, that should be kind of a sort of hope for everyone to just kind of get through it and finish off the year strong. And hopefully next year things will be better. If anyone has any questions on how students are feeling with certain, th certain things, I'm more than happy to answer anything. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, financial summary. Okay. And you should have um, the January and February and March financial summaries. And Rebecca, is that what you didn't have access to? No, nope, I have those. It's okay. there's the other two things in the. Okay. Attachments. Sure. Okay. Budget, under budget discussion. Yeah, I also don't have access to those. Yeah, none of us do have access to the CIP okay. and the draft calendar. We can't open. Okay, we'll we'll take care of that. Were those shared? Audra, did who shared those? Just so Jen, I know. I think Jen shared those yes yesterday. I believe. Okay. I will yeah. take her down. Okay. Denise, do you want to talk? Start with the the financial summaries. Yeah, so uh, this is the regular monthly summary that we provide. We usually try to go over it the second meeting of the month, um, January, due to the busyness of our meetings in the last month or two, a couple have gotten um, kind of away from us due to the, again, due to the topics at hand. Um, and I didn't want to just skip by them, so I included them. They have been done. I, I included them. Um, March that we're showing you today, obviously, is hot off the presses since March 31st was yesterday. Um, but we are looking for revenue kind of on track. The expenses look on track to me. There's nothing that's jumping out as um, extremely unusual. Um, again, um, we are getting to the point in April, May, where we start to try to recap the year and see what might be available toward the end of the year where if we can start to estimate where we might end the year. Um, but it's a, it's a little too early yet. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about the report or anything I can help with. Denise, what are some of the things, um, you said it's a little too early to kind of make year end estimates. What are some of the variables that you would see in a typical year? Um, so, you know, maintenance has, um, our facilities and maintenance category has a lot of money still left to it. If you look at that, um, the March report, for example, it still has about a, over a little over a million dollars left. Um, that can be attributed, um, utilities again, where a month, um, in March we pay February utilities in April we pay March. So the utilities, are something that um, isn't quite there. We also, um, let me let me take a quick look here. Um, you know, uh, let's see, some of the bigger categories, student and staff support. So we still haven't paid out stipends yet. Um, we still, transportation again, we're not sure what comes up as far as repairs and maintenance and parts and all of those things. Like it's just, um, we're still kind of chugging along, but there, it's mostly in those categories. Um, trying to think of something else that might spark my memory about something big, but um, special education is one we look at very closely toward the end of the year. We have a requirement to meet what's called maintenance of effort. And basically what that means is we have to spend at least as much on special education and the local budget as we did the year before. So while we ha you can see all the encumbrance in special education, most of that is staff. So if for any reason staff leave mid-year or don't work as many hours or um, you know, a child doesn't need a one-to-one -one ed tech anymore, whatever the reason, we have to kind of monitor that to make sure we spend at least as much as we did last year. So there's a little bit of um, estimating still to be done there. Um, Let's see. We also haven't yet put through um, 
the the um, amount that food service is might need at the end of the year, that four hundred thousand um, dollars. I think it's going to be closer to three, but that also is something that's not put through the budget yet. Mm. Any other questions from anyone? No. Okay. Um, all right. Budget discussion. And it looks like Jen shared with us. Right those two documents. So if you go back to your email. Okay, thank you. We just, we'll give you a minute to look at the CIP list before we start the budget discussion. And this CIP list is the one that Linda requested last meeting where she wanted to see a list with just the proposed projects. That's all that this is. It just took out the rest of the information that had been on the other sheets. So these are proposed, but not funded for next year? Um, they are in our proposed budget. So they are in, in the fiscal 22 proposed budget. Thank you. That's a lot easier to look at like that. I, I was getting confused over um, just having to line it up and trying to remember which stuff was actually going through and then seeing the other numbers in there was confusing me. Thank you. That's much, much okay. easier. I'm glad I'll, I'll make sure I'll make a point to keep it in the rotation. <laughs> Thanks. I did just hear from Linda. She's not probably going to be able to make it this evening. Okay. Um, so other than the CIP list, um, where are we with sort of, I guess the budget discussion, aren't we we're finalizing it? Yeah. I, I think you guys are at a place where you're, we're pretty darn close. I think there's still, um, some things sitting out there in terms of like what the medical actually comes in at, um, there's like one or two things that are just, we're just kind of waiting on that final uh, final um, information. Those will not in my, and Denise, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they're going to raise the budget. It would be more of a lowering of the budget. So here, here, probably, here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> woo, yeah. Um, so you, so what you're looking at currently is our proposals. And at, at this point, you just if, are the things that you still wanted to talk about. One of the oh, things you had thought about was the um, was that fourth grade teacher at the Knowlton School. Um, and then I think there was some conversation about guidance. So other than that, I don't think there's anything still hanging out there unless people have questions that I haven't thought about. I, I thought think last week that we wanted to keep the fourth grade position in, but that you had sufficiently convinced us that there would be plenty of um, guidance. It's just coming in other ways or being funded in other ways. Did I, did other board members remember that the same? Yeah, the guidance position we were kind of convinced on, but the, the fourth grade teacher, we were still kind of in a holding pattern on. Right. Wait, waiting to see some more kindergarten numbers, hopefully. Yep. Um, and uh, to see if, if we were able to drop any more money and slide this in instead of taking the huge, the big drop. Right. So what I can tell you are um, the Lebanon numbers for kindergarten as of today are 48 registrations. North Berwick are fi is at 54, which would put them at that threshold of needing to hire somebody, um, another teacher. 
So with that anticipated um, placeholder we had, they will most likely need that to offset the numbers in kindergarten in North Berwick. Right. Berwick, Berwick, Berwick currently is at 86. Um, so those are our numbers. So that one position that we were holding for either kindergarten or fourth will likely go to the fourth, the third, the kindergarten position. Yeah. Kindergarten. So really now the discussion is, do you want to add that fourth grade position to Knowlton? I think that we should um, consider that fourth grade teacher uh, because the class sizes in, at that school at 21 can cause some issues mm -hmm. with uh, spacing as well as the high, it's a high number for fourth graders. Did you say it's 21 that are going to be right now in that one fourth grade class? Uh, I don't know if Michelle's on here, but I believe that's what she said last week. It was 21 per class at okay. the fourth grade level if it stayed the same. Hmm. And isn't part of the issue of the shape of the rooms that makes having that number of kids in that space difficult? Yeah, I believe that that is one of the issues is that there are some, the rooms are not as big in some locations. There are some bigger rooms, but there are some rooms that are not that big uh, to handle that size of a class. But uh, that's the size of the classes that we've been doing for the most part, mm -hmm. if I recall, in fourth grade. Right. And, and, I also, for a little while. and I think the other concern is just the amount of students moving in in the summer. Uh, Berwick has a, a fair amount of move-ins, K-5. Um, so that is right now, if you're looking at starting at 21, that could get up to 24 quickly. Uh, Do you see it going up and not down? We we typically see it go up in the summer. Yeah. You know, I, okay. I don't think it's going to go. It it doesn't typically go down. It's pretty rare, like ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, Denise, can you clarify for me where we are actually are with the budget right now? Like, what's our percentage? Yes. Yeah, so, <clears throat> if I take the budget per the draft two that everyone has, and I deduct the hundred two thousand from the food service that uh, we will no longer need to take, we are looking at a 4.29% increase to taxpayers. Okay. And if we were to add this position, it goes to 4.63. Okay. And that is without the adjustments for um, medical and any other um, updates to salaries and benefits. And our medical right now is at three or four? Five. Oh, I thought we had already dropped it down last meeting. No, no, we sort of kept it as a window. Like, um, so 4.63 would be the highest that we would be. And then with any other adjustments, it would go down from there. Yep, yep correct. And we're okay with the fund balance? which would be approximately 750. We hadn't dug deeper than that. That's healthy. Yeah. So who's the betting man? I'm thinking, I'm thinking that our percentages will go down for the medical. And what were you saying to me per what, what is each percentage point? Denise? Historically, it's approximately 50,000, but it really depends on the year. So mm -hmm. if I were to go down to 3% from five and take 100,000 off, mm -hmm. our percentage goes down to 4.15. And that's taking out food service, adding grade four, and going down to 3%. Mm -hmm. um, again, the, um, the highest increase this year for medical for any district is going to be 4.62 um, and we still we have a good rating so the 4.62 are for districts that don't have such a good history mm -hmm. ours is good ours is, is it, 
I don't have it right here. It's like 0.81 or something, 0.82. So it's a good, it's less than one, which is the good side of things. Um, so Travis, I don't know, I'm, I'm willing your zero, but I don't know if we're gonna go that low. But even if we go to 3%, even at 3%, right, we should sure. see that below the 4.29. Mm -hmm. And it includes the fourth grade teacher. Yeah, yeah. kind of what I'm getting at is that I, I think we could easily right now jump it to three and be fine. And that would cover the fourth grade teacher and keep us within that same normal range. But we might even be lower. Right. So basically what happens from here. So next week, the 8th, we have to approve a dis you, the board has to approve a district budget, which means that we get our medical information on Tuesday, the 6th. I need to we need to run that all through payroll and pull it through all of the documents that you receive and adjust everything um, to have the number for you on Thursday. So it's a very tight window. I'm kind of hoping that maybe they throw us some some good cheer and give us the information on Friday to give us a couple days. But um, at worst, the sixth, and then we I won't have a number for you really until the eighth. So does it? Do we have to do it on the eighth, or could we bump the board meeting to like the following Monday mm -hmm. if needed, or is it set that we have to approve the budget on that day? I think when we, when we build, sorry, generally when we build the timing for this, we back up from the district budget meeting and the and the referendum in June. Like we count back a certain number of weeks. And I think in order to get it to the lawyers, to get all of the warrant articles and then get this to the printers so that we can print our budget books. I think it's, it, that's why we chose this date. Um, there is, I guess we could move it to a Monday, but I don't know what that gain, like as long as we have the number for you next Friday. Yeah, that it would really be you if you couldn't get us, you know, if it was yeah. too rushed. Oh, I, I'll, it'll be ready. Okay. <laughs> I say we give her Monday off and let her stay 24 hours on Tuesday. <laughs> um. So I, I, that this won't be held up by me on my end. The only thing that would hold it up is for some reason they didn't give us the information on the 6th. Okay. Um, do we, is the board sort of comfortable with this, you know, where we are keeping that fourth grade teacher in with the assumption that we're gonna have some additional savings? Is anybody, um, have an issue with that and where we are? I'd like to see the position stay in the fourth grade teacher. And it, if it should happen that we don't need that position in Berwick, very well we could we could uh, use that position in one of the other towns. So I, I think it's important that we have that buffer with that, that uh, position staying in the budget. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. Yeah, we don't want the class size getting too big affects the quality so do we need to vote on that or i don't think so mm -hmm. nope it's because we're going to be we'll just basically put it back in the budget and when you guys vote hopefully next week then um that will be included and that will be the decision maker okay great it's good good in a difficult year i would say all of the schools and cost centers made this uh, a very smooth process for us good. yeah they did a great job they did um okay draft calendar And that you just got, so I'll give you a moment to look at that as well.
Ms. Lieber, did you weekend normally a four-day weekend, or am I just not remembering the last 12 years of my life? It typically, I'm just, now I'm trying to remember. I, <laughs> it usually is. I take the holiday yeah. camping. Yeah. Where are we at with our non-compliance days with the SRTC? We have some compliance issues uh, that we, what, what's happening is um, Kathy Sargent, who is collecting all of the calendars from all of the districts who works at SRTC, is that she's the director, is once they're approved by the school boards, she's taking them and she's writing a letter to Pender Macon, who's the um at the DOE, the commissioner, and talking about our out of, out of compliance days. So a couple of things that you may see here, um, we started SRTC August 30th and 31st because Sanford will be in school. So our students will be attending SRTC at that on those days, and that will help alleviate some of that discrepancy we have with the dates. We've done that in the past. Uh, that's nothing new that we've done, but that's just a practice that we will continue moving ahead. Um, we also moved our Wednesday early release late start to Wednesday to uh, fall more in line with the Sanford timing of their release time, which is also on Wednesdays. Um, and I think some of the other local districts are going to be um, doing that as well and also sending in their students at that August 30 and 31 date as well. So we do have some compliance issues. We can certainly, um, the, we needed to we need to approve this to send it over to Kathy so Kathy can send it on to the DOE. And then if there are any changes they want us to make uh, based on the letter that Kathy writes on behalf of all of us, then we can adjust. But they really wanted this approved by the boards before we uh, send a letter over. So the 30th and 31st, does that bring up any issues with contracts or transportation at least because they're the ones that would be affected by it? It does not. Those are our teacher workshop days um, anyway. So um, transportation would be in the buildings for trainings and orientation and different things like that. So that falls in line with our schedule. Mm -hmm. So the biggest change I see is the Wednesday, Thursday to Wednesday. Yes. Thing. Right. And we put in two storm days, not five. We typically put in five storm days. We're not sure how the state is going to come in and look at, at snow days again, if they're going to let the remote days um, count as a snow day. That's what we're thinking, but we haven't heard the latest update on that yet. But we put in a two-day buffer. Uh, there's no question that um, this past year has proven that we can do a couple of remote days yeah. if needed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah, hopefully that's what we're going to learn. Change the world. Yeah. Nice long Christmas break. Mm. I don't like the last day being that Monday. I don't see the students going to be attending school that day for a half a day but it is what it is, I guess. Um, on June 14th and 15th for the teacher workshop day, um, why would there be one right before the, the end there? We typically have a day or two after school gets out, primarily so teachers can work on some last minute um, professional development preparing for the fall and also closing out their classrooms and doing some, you know, any kind of data or any kind of work like that. That's, that's what we use that time for. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this year, more than any year, you know, like that next day after, after school ends, we're packing up because we have so many classrooms to move back. Mm. So, yeah. So if we have to use those with snow days, are those teacher workshop days going to get pushed back too? They typically do. I guess I, 
probably everybody else knows this already, but um, why is there why is there semester and trimester? I thought it was all semester. At the elementary level, they do trimesters. Oh. Um, at the high school, it's semesters. Right. Yeah. Oh. What does the middle school do? In my brain, I'm I'm, I'm having There's a moment. Semesters. There's semesters too. Yeah. Okay, I was semester. having a moment. <laughs> so at the elementary level, they do trimesters, but they do like um, even up at the high school and middle school, they have the conferences, but we typically use those conferences as the check-in points. Um, so it's even though there's only three report cards that go out per se, there's five points of contact at a minimum. And this is something that we do need to um, have an action for. Okay, so just so that I can um, make sure I understood this, so we need to vote to approve it, and then we're writing a letter to the commissioner to basically adjust the issues, but they want us to approve it first. They, yes, we need to approve it, and then Kathy Sargent, who's at SRTC, the director, will write the letter looking at all of the calendars, talking about our days that are dissimilar. Okay. Now, this is Joanne. I'll make a motion to accept the calendar. I'll second. I will second it. All in favor? We have, there's just, there's really just five of us. Yeah, that's it. And. All right, educational programming update. Sure, so we'll start with attendance. Our, for our student attendance, our low was uh, one day. Our low for a day was 88% in attendance, and our high was 99% in attendance. Staff is running very consistently at 93 to 97% um, attendance rates. Uh, so a couple things that we're highlighting tonight, um, transportation. So just to let everybody know that we have hired one new bus monitor to fill an open position. And there is some um, interest in that um, monitor becoming a bus a driver for us. So that is a big, uh, that's a big win. Um, yeah. And that's great. The drivers are doing well with additional students. And um, something that we wanted to just kind of bring everybody um, up to speed on is we had a recent positive case for, for a student that was riding the bus. And we were able, we were in compliance with having two windows in the front of the bus and two in the back open. So the bus did not need to be quarantined. So that was really, you know, we're following our procedures still. And that was very, um, it mitigated the amount of students that needed to be uh, remote. So that was a, a really good thing for us. Andrew, would you say that, like, unless we have some freakishly cold day, that for the most part, we're sort of in that realm now that those windows can be open? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's we, great. Yeah, we went a little bit of time when we absolutely couldn't do that. But yeah. Um, yeah, but we are right back at it right now. So we will still encourage families to have their children wear coats because it is a little windy and breezy on the bus with those windows open but it certainly makes a big difference for us. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, so just a couple things on um, spring athletics. We have 160 high school students signed up. The high school game schedules are out. Um, April 5th is the official start time for our middle school athletics and games begin on April 26th. So we are expecting um, a full season. Uh, we are able to have spectators which is a really nice piece um, because, you know, some of the um, amount of um, crowds have um, lightened up a little bit outside. So we're really excited to be able to welcome some of our spectators to our activities. So those uh, so are, yeah. I have a question about athletics. I haven't, I, in the fall and winter, I kind of read the um, MPA's guidelines. I haven't really read them for spring yet, but for the most part, like, are kids having, or do they have to wear a mask when they're actually competing or um, like how, I'm sure it varies by sport, but like in general, how is that working? I did see Aaron here. I don't know if he still is. 
think he stepped off. Okay. So I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that because right. I can't. Some things they do and some things they don't. So I, don't it's, I believe it's full masking right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're all going to be in better shape down the road after having worked out with, you know, half of oxygen. So that's right. And so those are those are just our educational programming updates. All right. Um, employment. We have none at this time. All we right. will be bringing forward a um, we have some interviews, some final interviews next week. And if that goes well, we'll have some um, things to bring up for next time. And other, which I do have a couple of questions and I apologize. I had meant to send them over ahead of time. And I did not get a chance. Um, the, what kind of communication, and, and I apologize. I'm not sure if I got it and I, like just missed reading it, but um, has communication gone out yet to the ninth grade families about the extra day and also the extra remote day? Because people, everyone seems to know about it, but I don't actually remember getting any email So, as a parent. So I, I'm just wondering where we are with those. Sure, AJ is on, I see. AJ, do you want to speak to this? I think yes. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Sorry, just waiting for the camera to catch up. Um, yes. Yeah, so Denise, you're right. That is scheduled to go out tomorrow. So that's going to go out by school messenger tomorrow. Over the last couple of days, we've crafted that note to parents, trying to make it as not confusing as possible. Just because anytime changes happen, it's like, wait, what? Huh? Um, so yes, we're scheduled to send it out. And then the really important part is going to be, especially our ninth grade teams, following that up with their individual students, because it's really that's. That's what ends up being the best communication is um, after we're able to kind of blast something out to grade nine through 12, those individual teams, like I'm thinking for ninth grade, the maroon, white and gray teams will send out, okay, here's what this actually means. Here's what it's going to mean for your kid on our team, this block, this block, this block. So that'll be the good piece. And they're all ready to go with that as well. So. And when does that change happen? Um, it is going to be Wednesday the 12th is going to be the day. So before break is so our plan. Both of those changes will be? Yep. Both will happen. Yep. So we have like all of our, um, like the Wednesday, next Wednesday, we have scheduled because we have a, a fair number of room changes. So, you know, not that they're moving during the day, but they're going to move from where they've been to a new spot to accommodate those ninth graders. So we have next week is our day where all of those changes will happen. So it'll be, you know, meet me in this room, everything will look normal. And then together we're gonna walk over here and this is where you'll meet me from now on. So that's all scheduled to happen next Wednesday. Okay. Can you do me a favor when those emails go out, can you just copy the board on them? Because I know for board members that don't have students, um, yeah. sometimes it, you know, we can get a little lost in the communication. Absolutely. Piece. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I think that was, I think those were my questions. Perfect, yeah. Um, does anyone else have any others? So I have, a, I have an other that just kind of went out tonight uh, in the Facebook world. The 2021 graduation calendar raffle has been released. Um, it's all over Facebook. You can either Venmo, um the friends of noble at uh, friends of noble 2021 or you can send your payments into uh, cynthia playstead if you are interested in a calendar thank you and i think within like five minutes they had already raised like 240 dollars right. they're at 500 already nice cool. right i i have another if if the board doesn't have any more others Okay, so we um, there's two things that we've been doing this past week. Well, for a long time, but we just started. We sent out our survey three days ago, two days ago regarding um, return to school for 21-22 and how many folks are um, planning on sending their children back. We have currently, let me look at my numbers here, 1,806 responses. So about half or about me almost we're getting close to two thirds of the student body and we're looking at if I can find my numbers 
So uh, I started to fill it out. And what's then that? I started to fill it out. Yeah. And I remembered I didn't have to. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> currently, of those 1,806 responses, 96.2% or 1,738 are planning on sending their children back to school for in person learning. And we have 63 that are looking at um, another option or other options. So that is good news for us. People are wanting to send their children back to us, which is good. Um, on that other front, we released um, yesterday, and I don't know if you if we sent it to you all or not, but yeah, we're- My other question is, could you forward that to us? Sure. So we are um, going forward with our Noble Middle School Virtual Academy. Um, we've hired three teachers to um to be the learning coaches for these for this group of kiddos there'll be an application process for students and parents to fill out and this is specifically for sixth seventh and eighth graders um, as we pilot this idea of providing a virtual learning academy that is not strictly virtual some of it will be in-person um, experiences so we're looking to like develop a community this is very much focused on um, you know, that flexible sort of schedule that some families can and would like to have and still maintain within the school system and not completely homeschool their children. So it's sort of, um, it's, it is what the pandemic has allowed us to do, right? Break the tradition a little bit and offer something that, that works with the school system. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. We've had a, a few kickbacks of positive information. You know, people are like, yay, this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, and then there'll just be determination of whether or not we have enough um, interest to go forward. Um, it'll, it'll take a little bit to grow, but similar to our MHA program that we did a, you know, a few years back, um, this is pretty innovative and it may take a little bit to get it all settled, but I have a feeling it's gonna take off pretty well. Um, so like just looking at the 63 folks that are not planning, uh, they're looking for alternatives. Um, there's a good chunk of those that are middle and high school kids. So we will chat with all of those folks um, and see what's going on. So we'll keep you updated as we go, but I will forward you the, um, the information. Bridget Dumont, I like, I want to, you know, praise her. She is unbelievable. She's done such a great job. She has taken on this role of being um, sort of spearheading this and she's she's just fabulous so and we love chris russo too he's good with it too <laughs> there's a bunch of, there's a few of us working and we've been doing it since the beginning of the year so um interesting and fun great all right um, well, that's that's not above and beyond i know there's been some confusion about this whole, mm -hmm. this whole virtual thing that's not above and beyond your normal day activity that's that's in place of combination separate thing. Yeah, it's a completely sort of different strand of MSED 60. Right. So it's not like you don't you come to school all day and then you do something at the end of it. So um, do you have a, a target of how many kids you would want to have in this? Yep. So currently we are looking at a total of 60. So kind of averaging 20 per grade is our thought process. Um, it'll be, it, some of it will just be playing it out in terms of who applies and how that works. There is a pretty strong parent component. People really, parents need to be on board with this. This is not a, um, not a program where you are not able, you, I think we need parents to be involved. We need them to be able to provide transportation for field trips and think, you know, things like that and help with that, um, working with their students at home and making sure that things, you know, what people are connecting and doing that kind of work. So what is um, what is 20 kids per grade? What is, I don't know how many kids are in those grades. Like what percentage of that? Oh, um, it's probably it's like a little bit under 10 percent, maybe like 8 yeah. percent. It depends on the grade, honestly. Some some of our grades are like in the 170s, 190s, and some of our grades are like in the 220s. So it just I don't I don't have that number off the top of my head, honestly, Denise, but I can look at that. No, no, no. No, that's good. That, I was just wondering. Yep. There's no tuition cost to the no, no it's and, a it's and a are we piloting in this program through the 
grant funding that's coming or because like, I don't remember seeing anything in the budget specifically exactly. about it. Yep, it is not in the budget. It is strictly outside in the ESSER fund grants. So, because, and, and, you know, we could theoretically, if things go really well, you could tuition kiddos in from other districts, right? Um, but that's what we're question. talking right now. <laughs> so right now we're looking at just in-district, but potentially do out-of-district as time goes on. Yep, absolutely. Right now we're looking at just 6th, 7th, and 8th, but right. if it works, we can expand it. It would be great. Years. Yep. Yep. So this is the, this is our counter to like um, the main connections Academy, which takes some of our students away into another world, right? They like, and then they're no longer um, part of the MSCD 60 family. And so we want to bring them back. We want to have that opportunity. The other piece that this does counter for some folks is who are homeschooling because of their own personal um, schedules and flexibility, we would want to be, we, we can theoretically provide a very flexible schedule for folks that are interested in homeschooling. That is not going to hit all the homeschoolers. There's lots of reasons why people homeschool. You know, some of it's more philosophical and they're not really interested in being part of a public school system. That's okay. So um, it's just another option, I think. Great. Sounds great. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? So board meeting next Thursday where we will vote on the budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely need to do that. Yes. And the audit. For fiscal 20. And the and audit. Guess what? We can have a week off. Wouldn't that uh, be nice? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if there's nothing else, can we get a motion to adjourn? Or not? This yeah, and I'm motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Was that Stephanie? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank Good you. Night. Bye.